Both shine a little yeah, bit, man. It's up to you. Brother Shiru Jeremoji, I want to welcome you to Over a Drink. Right. Usually have some alcohol. But <laughs> I'm not, you're not the first one to show up. I'm not and, the alcohol and, guy. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I get it. So first of all, let's toast, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? We'll... <laughs> yes, sir. So give me a brief history of your life in me. I got involved in uh, volunteering at WHYY mm -hmm. in the uh, late 1970s. I was interested in trying to be an engineer because they said, oh, you know, you can do interviews. I said, interviews? I'm not really interested in doing interviews, nah. but okay. I ran into E. Stephen Collins. Okay. He said, you should apply for this job we have. I applied for the job. I was never so shocked I got this job. <laughs> Never so shy. I got this job as a, I said, as a reporter. I said, okay. So, so, and from that point on, I started, I started reporting for DAS. Um, I went to WPEN and I went to WCAU. Okay. Had a car accident uh, when, on a job at CAU mm -hmm. and was out. While I was out, they fired everybody. <laughs> Decided I wanted to do something else uh, for, for a while. And then got this bright idea of doing a community newspaper, which I started in um, 20 years ago. Did some, some more news with um, Clear Channel, DAS, Power 99, JJZ. URD was the last place I actually did a newscast. I've been around a few years. In 35 years of covering this city, what are some of the stories that have stood out to you most? Well, MOVE was the big one. I, I covered the incident where they dropped the bomb. I was out there that day. When MOVE happened, I probably was mid-teens, I remember hearing about it and thinking, how they drop a bomb on a house in the middle of the city? I have to go back to 1977. Okay. I was working for the American Friends Service Committee in 1977. I happened to be around the corner in Palton Village when the police first came out to the move uh, to um, cordon off the area. And when I came outside and I, and I looked around, I thought it was a drug bust. I didn't know what was going on until I started seeing all these people I knew. <laughs> <laughs> I said, wait a minute. I said, what are these doing here? What? And then I saw my boss. I said, oh boy, I'm going to go get some coffee. <laughs> I'm in the wrong spot. You know, I had walked outside before they, before they actually blocked things off. Uh -huh. So I got pretty close and I started looking around and it was clear to me that that day the, they had um, the high ground, they had the sharpshooters in place. My sense was they were getting ready to do those people. Many people came, put themselves between the police and move. That's what saved move that day. I, be, I always believed so, that. So the community came out? Everybody, yeah. All the community came out, the, you know, the left, the black, you know, um, progressives. Everybody came out and stood between the police and move. A fellow named Walt Palmer was one of the people who came and spoke because they had different people come up. Uh, Sister Falak Bata, Father Paul Washington. Walt Palmer made a speech at one of those little rallies. Mm -hmm. And he foretold what was going to happen. He said, he said, one day you're going to hear a shot and you're, it's going to ring out and nobody's going to know where it came from. Then it'll be a fuselage, the bullets flying back and forth. He said, and at the end of it, somebody's going to be laying dead on, on the ground. And that's what happened. This is what he said in 77. In 77. In 77. Oh, yeah. He, he said that in 77. I was there. I heard him say, and I'm like, wow. So I, and I always so remember. So he prophesied oh, basically right. he was, what was going to go down. Well, 85, I was working for DAS. It was Mother's Day. My mother had just died. So I'm like, ugh. Barbara Grant was my news director. Mm -hmm. And so we had gone out there. We, you know, we had heard the back and forth between the, the police and move. I had a pager at that time. Yeah. We didn't have no yeah, cell, cell phones. phones like, I had a pager. She was ringing that, that pager off. And I'm like, Shh, I'm not answering this pager. <laughs> I'm off. <laughs> I'm not answering this pager, man. You got to be kidding. Eventually, I did answer the pager. Um, I went down there. We, it was clear that something was getting ready to jump. Something mm -hmm. was going to happen. And um, so it got late. I went and got some rest. I got up about five, came back, and then boom. You know, then it start, everything started. I remember seeing uh, Maida Odom crawling and, and, uh, and the cameraman from Channel 3 crawling down Cobbs Creek Parkway. One, one woman from, who was working at Channel 10, she's trying to get between the car and the curb. There's no place to go between the car and the curb. Yeah, she's trying, she's to, get trying to get it, trying she, to create because, a space. Because you hear the bullets, everything's Got flying. It. The bullets mm. flying and everything. So 
you know, and then boom, we hit a boom, and we, I guess they tried, that's when they first tried to get in, um, in the basement, and then of course we heard the, um, the bomb drop, and, and uh, I, I had a, another relative that lived a few blocks away, I got up on his roof and looked as the fire was burning, and it was just, I felt, I just felt like everything went out of me. Wow. I said, well, this is, a, this is done. We didn't know if, at that time that Ramona, you know, had been mm -hmm. saved and, and um, uh, Michael Moses Ward, mm -hmm. who they called Birdie, yes. he also came out. My take on it was controversial uh, and, and, and continued to be controversial because um, I heard what they were saying, what they said to the police commissioner, you know. I remember what they were talking to when they were talking to the police. I'm talking about move, the move. Uh -huh. folk. I'm listening to them talking about Sambor, you know, you're... Your, your wife's going to wake up in the morning with a black man with her. You're not going to, because you're going to be gone. You know, we, you know talking to the cops. So they, so they, 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 were, they, were, they were egging them on. Much as people may believe that the police actions could have been avoided, do you think the actions of some of the members of MOVE also, they, they, they were both wrong on some level? Well, you know, I mean, frankly, it was no reason why they should have bombed those people. Let me let me just first well, say that. Well, I agree with that. You know, I can't I, even not, imagine what they could have done. There's nothing do that. that you can say or do which would require somebody to drop a bomb and take the life of men, women, and children. Mm -hmm. Nothing. It's no. No. It's, it's no. Nothing should lead to that. There's no no way I can uh, would say that it's equivalent. Yeah. It's no, it's not, it's not equivalent. No, not, you know, you shouldn't be bombing people in West Philly. After looking at a month's worth of hearings at WHYY, reading, studying, and, you know, covering a lot of different parts of this, right. and I'm saying to you that they were, they were, it's clear to me they were out to get them, and they pinned those people back. They, 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 they had the sharpshooters in the back, mm -hmm. and they were made sure those people weren't coming out. And it was only by the grace of God that, that, um, is, that uh, uh, Ramona yeah. and, um, and, and, and that, Lord, that gentleman who helped them pull, who pulled them out, who, who, who did have some empathy, uh -huh. you know, who did have some humanity. Do you think yeah. the, um, that those actions taken by, by police and, 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 and I guess the city government affected like the, the, the relationship between, like what was the atmosphere after the fact? I think that the city never really gets over that incident. As someone who's covered the city for as long as you have, 30 plus years, if there was something that you could see change tomorrow. The emphasis um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a comprehensive way on getting people money in their hands and, um, and then having them understand the importance and what really should be done to educate the children. If you have money, then some things, you know, you just won't have to do. Yeah. But you have to have people who, who are educated so that they can be prepared to deal with the jobs as the, in the future. Because if you don't have uh, people who are, who are properly prepared for the workforce, then they can't, they can't take advantage of the opportunity, even if it presents itself. Hey, Shimu, man, thank you for coming out, brother. We're gonna toast one more time. Yes, Over sir. Over a drink, I appreciate your time, man. Thank you, brother. Thank you, it's been, man. You it's been it. good, man. It's been good, it's a pleasure. Well, you're good, man. It's my pleasure, man. You're a wealth of knowledge in this city, man. You know what I mean? You've been here a long time, man. If you wanna know something, just come rap with you. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs>